Hey, this is Mark Curran, and you're listening to 7:50 AM or 88.5 FM WSFI Radio. The show is Cross Examination. I'm Mark Curran, the host. As you recall, I'm a former county, state, and federal prosecutor, the longest-serving sheriff in Lake County history. And uh, our guest today, or this is our second episode, is Anthony Curran. You might recognize the last name, uh, Anthony. Welcome. Thank you. Have I Yep, Anthony's my uh, his younger brother. He was recently a candidate for state representative in Chicago, uh, running out in Chicago for for the uh, General Assembly in, in Springfield, Illinois. And we want to talk to him a little bit about his race, his experiences, but we want to start out just uh, kind of introducing Anthony to she, to you. Anthony, uh, you uh, grew up in uh, Deerfield, right? Deerfield, Illinois. You went to Holy Cross grade school and Home then the Chargers, right? Played football and then Loyola Academy, and then um, Villanova uh, University in uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So let's take out. Uh, let's begin with Holy Cross. You know, a lot of this is a Catholic radio station. Um, you're uh, in your mid fifties. So how was it? Um, how were you catechized uh, in that era of, of the seventies? In Holy Cross, or at Holy <laughs> that's Cross. a leading question, prosecutor. Uh, by osmosis only. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but they, they really anybody didn't... that that lasted had good parents. That's all I'll say. That's uh, we yeah. know, we know of a few names. We'll leave them off and we'll pray so, for them. But uh, it wasn't a whole lot of catechism. It was a lot of uh, feel good uh, at the time. Do you remember if they ever to- told us that um, of the concept of transubstantiation, where um, the, the host becomes uh, the body of Jesus Christ and the, the blood, the wine becomes the blood. Do you remember that concept ever being taught? No, you know, years ago, we uh, a group of friends of us had uh, dinner with Cardinal George, and somebody started to, their question to Cardinal George. You know, Cardinal, I went to Catholic schools in the Chicago area, and I got to tell you that I went to meet Cardinal George cut him up. He goes, stop right there. He goes, we're not giving any refunds, all right? <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> and it's pretty much stopped everybody's question on that because they had he had heard that so often, saying, you know, I didn't get what we paid for and I didn't get what my parents thought they paid for, unfortunately. I had right. a good friend out of yeah. uh, Holy Cross in Deerfield, Paul Beston, and he had um, a good, good, great family. And uh, we had chatted, reconnected after years, and he had, uh, he had come to the same conclusion. He was... Um, a right-thinking American, and he said the 70s were probably worse than the 60s because it, in the 60s at least you had an argument. In the 70s it was just a fallout, and everybody had stopped arguing, and uh, nothingness or nihilism took over, and it was really kind of tragic because uh, right nihilism. Give define that term if you would. <laughs> belief in nothingism. It's really yeah. it's uh, it's it's only the, for the here and now. There's no uh, there's no bother. Uh, to think beyond our our daily means, so it's um, right. It overlaps with our yeah. society. So I would time. say that um, is a grade. I, I think we could probably give Holy Cross a, a C minus uh, by today's standards, maybe an F uh, uh, historically. <laughs> <laughs> would that be fair? Because uh, that would that would be at least as fair as some of the grades they gave me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we so, didn't get. We didn't have ABC. So you went on to we Loyola had, Academy. We had, we had one, two, three, four. How was Loyola Academy as far as teaching? Uh, the they, assumed, they assumed that we had learned our faith in right. grammar school, yeah. and they had assumed wrong. <laughs> yeah, I would say the Loyola Academy, um, the job of a high school is not so much to teach the catechism, it's kind of uh, to explore the... the uh, to build off that. Yeah, exactly. And they, were, and they had assumed wrong. There were some great yeah. teachers there. Yeah, there, I'd give Loyola there. Academy at least a B when we were there, maybe even an A minus. An A for effort, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. They, they believed in uh, what they were doing. So then you went to a Catholic college, Villanova. How was Villanova as far as uh, a Catholic <laughs> school? <laughs> it was pretty good, actually. It was, uh, they had some very uh, great uh, Augustinians there. Um, best story I can have for that is... Uh, I had my fun, and we had a uh, the, the dean of uh, dean of students, which is probably dean of discipline. He wanted me out of the school, and another uh, Augustinian wanted me to sign up with the Augustinians. So I fell somewhere between the two. Wow, that's a that's <laughs> high praise, though. That one wanted you to 
uh, join their order. So um, you got married uh, around the same time I, I did in the mid 90s and you have seven kids. Um, that's a big number for today's standards. So uh, <laughs> outside, tell, the, tell outside the NBA, that's a pretty good number. Right. <laughs> I mean, but that's that I always say that um, that to have seven kids is uh, shows one uh, faith two courage. Oh, it, it, I mean, you're really putting your trust in the Lord to have seven kids in today's world. So tell us, you know, what what's that all like? We're very fortunate. I'm very happy and, uh, you know, that we, we got seven uh, wonderful uh, creations. And um, our oldest, as you know, our, our oldest uh, was born and shortly after his birth, uh, we got involved in a serious car accident. And, uh, you know, I, I was entered into a marriage accepting, uh, you know, the hand you're dealt, whatever comes your way is what comes your way. So we're ha very fortunate to have one. And I recalled, uh, after the car accident, I was very concerned. My wife had a broken back, et cetera. And I was uh, very concerned that, um, you know, the, the, our plan would be interrupted. And uh, fortunately, uh, our plan and God's plan coincided. And we had, we were able to have the second one, whom we named Raphael because uh, tran translated into Hebrew, it's uh, God heals. So we were very fortunate to have uh, three boys and four girls. And the ages range from, uh, let's see, 25? 25 down to sixth grade. And you sent all the kids to uh, St. Mary the Angels, which is an Opus Dei school, I, I assume that- Opus that... Dei pair, Opus Dei led parish, and uh, yeah. you know, still an archdiocese uh, of Chicago school. Right, for those of you that don't know, it's right off of Armitage and the expressway. And uh, yeah, that's a, a really good school. Uh, have you been happy with it? Uh, for the most part, yeah, it's uh, it's not without its challenges. You know, it's in the city. It has uh, the same challenges that uh, everyone has, and it has not been uh, a seamless, smooth run for the uh, about twenty years we've been associated with it. it. There are some real challenges, and some, you know, my yeah. hair would be dark, dark brown. If, uh, right. More <laughs> easy. <laughs> so then the, uh, everybody went to Saint Ignatius, or the, the ones that are old enough have gone to Saint Ignatius. Yeah which is on Roosevelt Road in Chicago, and that's really good academically, I know. Uh, sure is. Maybe arguably the best school in Chicago academically. How is it as far as the, the Catholic side of things? Very good, I'm more than happy of it. I know a lot of people have, uh, you know, they raise, yeah. well, people from our side, so to speak, have raised uh, uh, their eyebrows when they say a Jesuit school. And I said, no, it's really good, uh, solid in that regard. Um, the priests, the religious there are, are, you know, very solid. They're uh, committed to their uh, mission uh, throughout. Um, they're serious about their faith uh, all the way through, and it, it encompasses everything, you know, from, you know, a morning prayer into, you know, prayer before every uh, athletic con contest. Um, they take uh, a serious role in the children, uh, the students, uh, you know, moral and religious formation. Yeah, let me play, play the devil's advocate because this show is cross-examination. St. Ignatius does seem to give a, uh, a lot of awards to pro-abortion politicians. Um, you know, how do you reconcile that? Uh, or a lot of recognition. My, well, them, my certainly. kids don't. <laughs> my kids don't. Do it. You know, some of these graduates that come through there. Now, keep in mind, it's a uh, an academic, academically rigorous school. It's college prep, so it's always been uh, always regarded as one of the uh, premier uh, college prep schools. So you're going to get a variety of characters that come through there uh, that, that might skip over um, the next other uh, nearest Catholic school or something. So they come there and um, they certainly do get educated. Um, whether they forget about some of those lessons, that's, you know, it's on their conscience. It's not on mine, right? you know, but, you know, if you look at St. Ignatius uh, now, the largest club there is a pro-life club. They send a contingent to D.C. Uh, every year. They have, a, they have a large group of uh, Dominican sisters there and they are fantastic and they teach not only religious studies they teach biology chemistry math etc and they don't give an inch they are solid and that's consistent through their worldview and their uh and their faith so well, what would you say to a listener out there that's contemplating sending the child to saint ignatius and spending all the money that it costs and what have you but then they see lisa madigan who is uh she went to Latin school. No, I know she did, but her, yeah. her dad, Michael Madigan, went to St. Ignatius. 
and they they've they recognized her they recognize people like her they promote people like her that are uh leading pro-abortion do they give awards or do they invite them in to, to discuss because you know you can uh certainly recognize that our 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 president our governor etc are not in uh a full communion with our okay, thought. Let's take it St. Ignatius out of the equation because okay. I know I, I think that St. Ignatius yeah, we'll beat up on definitely, somebody else. Yes, de St. Ignatius <laughs> de definitely has though. But I'm gonna, let's let's say Notre Dame for example. Get, wanting to <laughs> I'm give, thinking on another school. All right, giving an honorary <laughs> doctorate to uh, Barack Obama, who um, essentially was the, 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 the chief, the literary medal, That's the chief, what, that was the problem. chief sponsor of the uh, Infant Born Alive Act in the General Assembly. Failed once, he brought it again a second time. Possibly the most demonic piece of legislation ever introduced in America, Barack Obama. Obviously a, a big supporter of, of all that's evil, so much that's evil. And there's Notre Dame parading him out there and what have you. How, how, do, you rec how do we reconcile that? Me. By the way, Anthony has had one child graduate from Notre Dame so far. He's got another one at Notre Dame and maybe a third one going to Notre Dame. Yeah. His kids do very, very well academically. Yeah, exactly. It skips a generation, I guess. But <laughs> um, So a good friend of mine told me, you know, at Notre Dame and some of these schools, they like to uh, have keep both sides of all this nonsense um, content and believing that they can they run things uh you know yes we're pro-life uh yeah you know don't worry about us saying what we just said in the other room a, a minute ago we're on your side too so they get these two parties going but i'll say notre dame is uh fantastic in what it's in its core essence now these you're taking people in their format formative years in these uh the time of their life where they're you're encouraged to question your beliefs you're encouraged to question uh your your, your your thinking, your logic, et cetera. It, you be inquisitive, and that's all day, every day. There's not only one way of doing things. There's only one way of reading a book, et cetera. So when they come to these uh, well, schools... Well, when, when a child is born and you refuse that yeah. child treatment so it can die on the uh, okay. table, no, I yeah, don't know what don't. the other argument is for, <laughs> for allowing that. I don't know what the argument is to, to say that Barack Obama, right on, buddy. Well... Well, you know, present company included. Sometimes people take a little while to learn these lessons. So, you know, uh, so at, at Notre Dame, uh, if anyone goes there, I think everybody in this li uh, listening range knows, or we, yeah, we're, uh, we reach South Bend and, and our listening audience here. You can go to Notre Dame 24-7. Uh, you can, there are people go, stop off, pull off the highway, stop into Notre Dame. Go over to the grotto, and there are kids praying the rosary at 4 a.m. Yeah, now they I might know. be have a test yeah. at 8 a.m. Yeah, <laughs> and that's why they're praying the rosary. Right. But no, it, I, but it, uh, anybody knows if you got a kid at Notre Dame, yeah, you yeah. call the you call the kid and you say, "Hey, Grandma's sick, or yeah. your cousin has a, a, a problem, etc." And you say, "Would you say would you go over and light a candle at the grotto?" Yeah, and, that, and these kids think like. You know, could I have picked an easier school? Could I have picked a Paul and, so and not let me these ask you this. Night calls? No, I, I. So I would agree with you. I mean, my, one of my favorite people of all time was Charles Rice. Who, if our listeners out there haven't read a book called Fifty Questions in Natural Law, written by Charles Rice, I would very much encourage. You. He was a longtime law school professor at Notre Dame. They have a lot of people like Charles Rice. And have you had E. Michael Jones on? Yeah, no, we haven't. <laughs> but they, they also, Michael Jones that, that we grew up with? No. Oh, no. okay. The South Bendy Michael Jones. I, I, I was thinking of Father Michael Jones. Was it that, that Jones family, that's a, that was not Mike Jones who became priest. It was, yeah, it was Mike Jones. It's Mike Jones, okay. Yeah. What I would say about Notre Dame is Notre Dame is a mixed bag. I would agree with that, but I still think that's so. I would say it's about a, I mean, it might be a 90-10 mixed bag. But okay, yeah, be Notre Dame is better than, I would agree, Notre Dame is pretty good. They have a, a, a service in every dormitory which makes sure that the kids get to mass and or at least they have every opportunity every lifeline has been thrown their way yeah that's um, the, that's the thing yeah. we've given you every opportunity now right. you refuse to listen now there's other catholic schools not so much so we had three four uncles that went to georgetown in washington dc <laughs> all right let's beat on georgetown yeah no i mean let's let's this school is allegedly catholic and i have um what are you talking about i've been there Hunter biden went there Right, Bill Clinton went there. I went there ten times for the, would 
a lot of our listeners are out for the Right to Life um, march around this. They, host, they still host a pro-life conference. Okay, well, let week. me tell you something. <laughs> I have walked through that campus, and every time I've been on the campus, there's always, it seems like the pro-choice table is always set up. I've never seen pro-life indication on that campus. The, the, the professors there are so far left, and it's so heretical. And I would submit to you that they have zero interest in being a Catholic institution, yet um, it's allegedly a, a Jesuit-run college. How do we reconcile that? And would you have let your kids go to Georgetown if they got in there? Have you seen their basketball team lately? <laughs> I know they're terrible. <laughs> but no, well, I, and they, is Pat Ewing still the head coach? Pat Ewing is still the head coach. Yeah, He's well, having a horrible yeah, season. Couldn't have a better guy. Yeah. So what, tell, <laughs> you know, seriously, though, I mean, they're... Notre Dame was probably a poor example because it's mostly good. There's a lot of Catholic schools where I can't say that. Georgetown, I, I think, is, in my opinion, is mostly bad. So, well, how do we? When are we going to start taking away the uh, their charter? Take their uh, yes. Take the name back. When is the bishop going to say that you can't call yourself Catholic anymore? All right, well, let's. You want to you want to get a hit list because I we're in favor of uh, Dick Nixon these days. So our hit top of the hit list would probably be uh, <laughs> National Catholic Reporter out in Kansas City, right? Yeah. Didn't the bishop a long time ago said you got to remove the Catholic from your name because you're not very Catholic, uh, and you're you're not submitting reasonable um, to reasonable th local authority. So, uh, and then you know I don't think you got to go pretty far down the the tier to you know, finally get these uh, colleges and universities. Keep in mind who pays the bills at these things, and and uh, you know you're you're Catholic, Catholic in name only. At some times, I don't know. We believe in hope, right? So right. You have gone against the grain in terms of uh, raising your kids in the faith today, and and um, you know having done a, a really nice job with that. And as I mentioned earlier, you've had four go to college. Anthony's got one that had a 36 on the ACT and essentially all of them are were in that same ballpark another one had a 34 for those of you that don't have young kids 36 is a perfect score 34 is better than 95 plus percent of the people that take it his kids are all in that range uh, what have you done uh, that you could tell the listeners out there that are raising children how to raise them to to because they've gotten all this scholarship money when you got seven kids you gotta they, they gotta fend for themselves to some extent definitely when things are going well stay the hell out of the way <laughs> yeah so what, what advice would you give to the listeners out there because i i know here's his his one son that goes to marquette with with my i've had i got two at marquette or one that's out of there but uh i took him to mass at 8 30 because on a sunday morning because that's what i do when i get up there and we're walking out of mass and there's anthony's son so, you know, I, I'm not sure that my guy would have been at Mass, but for me, saying we're going to Mass this morning, or certainly not at that hour. I've gotten, so tell I've, us. <laughs> I've, gotten that, I've gotten that story a couple of times. Uh, my guy up there um, is a senior engineering student. Um, he, uh, he knows how to stick his finger in the eye. When he was going to uh, Jeju Church up there at Marquette, uh, they made an announcement. They said... <laughs> almost looking at him while they made the announcement. They said, you know, uh, this is during COVID. We're asking that uh, students don't attend these masses because uh, you have opportunity back at your dorm. So these are for local uh, community only. And uh, he said, as soon as I heard that, I went over to the sign-up sheet and signed myself up for daily mass, <laughs> next 10 masses. <laughs> that's great. That's, yeah, that, there you go. That's the way to do it. That's wonderful. You have one daughter um, that it's in Notre Dame right now, and she was part of the first Evans Scholar class at Notre Dame. Yeah, she's uh, uh, very self-motivated herself. She's a pre-med major. Um, solidly, she went on the pro-life march, so yeah. I, I know we're in the good grounds there. Yeah, is she at the pro-life march right now? Uh, no, she uh, not... Uh, I, don't believe so because I think we heard the other day she she gets a pretty full load as a pre yeah. A pre there's a lot of college students at the pro life march, but I I having been to ten of them, I would say there's more high school students from across the country, Catholic high schools. Yeah, Catholic getting out of class in high school is one thing. Getting yeah. out of class in college is a different thing. <laughs> right, right. The, the right. work is still there, and, you and miss they're the typically lab. taking seniors in high school or yeah, you know, yeah. upperclassmen, which is great because yeah. they get to meet. It's like a world youth day there, right? And so they get a, a, a sense that. It, 
goes far beyond them. There's much more uh, on the right side. So Anthony uh, finds himself living uh, and raising seven kids and doing a great job in what, what I would submit to you as one of the most godless places to live in the United States of America, <laughs> Chicago, <laughs> Illinois. So Ch Chicago alone it would be enough typically to make people think, ugh. But then you throw the word Illinois in, and that is really... Uh, Double ugh. <laughs> yeah, it's just a place that uh, all I can think of is... Um, you know, we could just take, scratch the word Sodom or Gomorrah out and, and substitute Chicago, Illinois, and, and scripture, and the story would make sense. So, now one of our uh, producers out here, Linda Prescia, was talking about the Chicago mayoral race, and you, you'll you be able to vote in that race. Uh, by the way... A few times. Yeah. <laughs> Lori Lightfoot, uh, you know, by the way, how many, what percentage of kids that, that go to Chicago schools actually graduate? That be start as a oh, freshman. every single one graduates. No, I mean, are they at level grade level? It's hysterical. No, no, I suppose if you go all four years, you do, but historically, the, no, the graduation numbers were way below 50 percent. It's no, they use those up to they get up to whatever the state standard is, whatever the uh, yeah. state demands, uh, a number be so that they get funding, so they get to that number. But if you go, you know, one level beyond that. And say who's at grade level reading, uh, reading comprehension, mathematics, etc., and uh, and you're getting into the uh, the, the twenty percent. So Lori Lightfoot, um, she doesn't send her kids to Chicago public schools, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> she sends them to uh, Catholic school. Yeah, sends, a, sends so, her adopted daughter to Catholic school. So you ran into her at, when Saint Ignatius was playing DePaul <laughs> DePaul Academy. Her daughter that came You're gonna from, help me here. Yeah, where, came from wherever. And essentially, you know, I, I guess my point is, she doesn't believe in a, in a thing that the Catholic Church teaches. And she's sending her in, but nonetheless recognizes that Chicago schools are so horrible that she needs to send her kid to a school uh, that it, it has the tenets of a religion that she hates. I'll tell you. If you, so were, how, hey, how? if you were back in high school, <laughs> would you give nothing more than to be in the same class as that kid? Because you could start every discussion. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I, sorry. I feel I'm sorry. sorry. For the I'm, kid. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm late to class today. I feel but sorry. Those roads for are so poorly maintained. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> of um, course, if you had a driver. <laughs> I suppose. I, I suppose yeah, I'd be I, on time. I agree. I, but Catholic schools used to want to know that the parents actually believed in the tenets of the faith before they'd allow the child to go there. You live off to a teacher, that might be your last day at school. Keep that in mind. Yeah, so right? what happened? Why, why did we just say, you know, let's we need the money. let the school be infiltrated by people that hate us? We need the money, I guess. Yeah. You know, it's a good uh, Catholic school in Chicago, Mount Carmel High, and, you know, they take a wide swath of people, especially you know, the boys, especially more if they can play football. But... They get these kids, and they're not on, on board, and they get lippy with some teacher. They call the parents in. They have the discussion. They said, you know, we've had enough of you, and uh, it, you have to, it has to reform. And they, uh, I'm giving the Mount Carmel secret away. They leave the room and said, I'll let you discuss this with your parents. They go outside the room and listen from the other room. And if the parent turns to the kid and says, uh, hey, get your act together. We're not putting up with this. You know, that's this is the last straw. The kid stays. If they hear from the other side of the door, um, yeah, they're coming down on you way too hard. You don't have to listen to this. Let's yeah. get out of here. And they they come back in the room and they say, okay, you know what? We've decided we're going to let you go. You can find another. Mount Carmel's one. hanging on by a thread, though. It's the same. Seven eight state champs. What are you talking about? No, football wise, of course. They, <laughs> they've they're going to win the by, they're going to win the wrestling championship yeah, this year too. But they they uh, they're the same order as the kids. My kids went to Carmel Catholic, and it's the same order. As is Juliet Catholic, and I think the only one that really, well, it's the only one that's in your the black black because is, you didn't is Carmel. You didn't convince your kids to become Carmelites. That's your right. That's you, yeah, that's exactly. That. Well, that's why you know Catholic. One of the reasons why Catholic education got so expensive is we don't have anybody in the religious orders anymore. Let's move on to the, okay. the state rep race that, okay. that you just. What was the uh, impetus? What decided? You, what made you decide to get in there and run for state representative? 
I got an email from a, a like-minded American, and he said, uh, hey, we're looking for candidates, and if you're considering, uh, respond to it. So I did, and uh, I went through a few questions, uh, Q&As with uh, good people from um, Illinois Policy Institute, as well as the Chicago GOP, and they said, we're, we're looking for somebody to challenge. And I said, yeah, sounds great. Uh, you know, I don't have any money, and uh, and we're up against you know high odds here. So, right. are you willing to do it? And I think yeah. I initially I was a little uh, tepid about it because you're going to actually put your name to some of your comments. You're not like an internet anonymous poster saying, uh, right? You know these people stink and they they have all bad ideas. And it's like no, now put your name to it. And so it takes a little bit of guts to step up there, but I uh, right. I don't regret it at all. It's actually I just want to clarify experience. Clarify one thing. So, you know, this is WSFI Catholic Radio, and we don't promote a, a political party. And I think you neither and I, do I. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think you and I are both in agreement. And you're you were probably the the first Republican in our family. I'm uh, a, a mom was. <laughs> Oh, our mom was yeah, okay. Absolutely. Our dad definitely was. Yeah, we had did not become one till inter very late. interesting dinner table. Yeah, so um, the the mother was more liberal as a Republican. The father was <laughs> far, far more conservative as a Democrat. Right. As time went on. Well, it, it, the life issue wasn't owned by the uh, yeah, Republican exactly. that Party was, back then. Clearly, yeah. yeah. You got in the race, and one of the things I wanted to talk to you about is this. Let's show uh, the uh, people that are watching the podcast. The listeners can't see this. But the podcast people can, and this was your political sign. This was the only sign you had. Well, I had two. I had two. Oh, okay, one in English and one in. Uh, well, I had. Spanish. I had the other one. It's actually funnier. Okay, it's, so tell us what the signs. The sign. This sign says what? All right. So 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 I don't see any arrows. Okay, so the, the, for those that don't speak Spanish, what does the sign <laughs> say? There are only two genders. There are only two genders, and then down at the bottom it says current thirty nine dot org. So. Um, what made you decide to have a, a political sign that said there are only two genders? Well, you know, I was so well funded. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It was, it was, uh, you know, you had limited means and, and you want to challenge them. And as I mentioned earlier, it's almost like uh, the Orwell 1984 experiment where they told the, the main character, they said, you know, two plus two is obviously four, but if we told you two plus two is five, would you believe it? Initially, he resisted, and he found it getting more torture, etc. And eventually, he succumbed to it. He said, "Fine, if you say two plus two is five, it's five. And that's where we are in society, you know, to, on, and not just on the gender issue, but on so many more things. And and it's to the life issue. You don't have to argue uh, from a you know a Thomistic standpoint or a Catholic standpoint. You say, is that a human life or is it not? And if, if you can prove to me that it's not, fine. You do whatever you want. You can have a mole removed from your face. I don't care, and I don't have any business on it. But that's human life, and it's deserving of protection. And now, going from that, you say, well, there's some level of protection, you know? So we're, let's scale this in. So before, you know, Roe v. Wade was uh, held in such high regard, uh, we, we could argue these points, state by state, neighbor to neighbor, et cetera. Roe v. Wade comes along and says that argument's settled and, and you know, just kind of that ham-handed thinking and saying the argument's settled, the science is settled, we're never going to discuss this anymore. If, in fact, if you bring it up, we'll deplatform you, we'll shut you up, we'll never invite you back to our discussions anymore. You're outside the political spectrum of, of permissible thought. And so we're at this juncture in much more than the, the, these, the life issue, the gender issue. Each one goes on. And the common person has... It says, hey, listen, you know, it's, it's up or down, it's right or wrong, it's left or right. It, it, it just state it and it makes sense. And we're at the, you know, obviously we're, you know, uh, believe in the pro life right. issue. And you get to these arguments and you're thinking, is it human life or is it not? And, yeah. and you know, and it gets, it's kind of encouraging when you hear these people say, you're talking about a baby. You know, yeah. you're talking about, it's not just a theoretical thought. You know, can I color yeah. my hair purple right. when I'm a boy? It's like, well, you know, that's that's a minor issue. Yeah. But these are big issues. And, you know, when somebody steps up and says, you know, it's like a, a Norm MacDonald. He's hilarious, yeah. you know, God bless his soul, but he's hilarious. And he gets to the end of the punchline. It's like, yeah, but you're still killing a kid. You know, and people, they're, you know, left's mind explode. Right. And they don't, don't want to say that. I remember, you know, growing up and... 
I went to college in Mobile, Alabama, at a Jesuit college. And then best went to, decision you ever made. Yeah, and then we went, we would go down to New Orleans, and second best decision. And they would have uh, transsexual bars, I think, right? Or or transvestite bars. I'm sorry. So I, at that point in time, I didn't know what the heck the difference was between a transvestite and a transsexual. I mean, it was it was not on the it was radar. More, it was a more innocent time. I yeah, I never even I never even knew that people actually had procedures to change their uh, their genitalia, and it, I mean, it just didn't exist. And now all of a sudden, it is just if explosion. You say, if you say boo about it. You're yeah, getting, you're getting a talking to, and you're not invited back to the school board meeting. Exactly right. And I, I mean, the, the, they are indoctrinating. Could you imagine, you imagine you're sending your kids to some public school, and and even some private schools, sending your kid off there, and they are uh, indoctrin or you know messing with your kids. Really, they're grooming your kids into the wrong direction, keeping it secret from you. I mean, you know, I don't want to say uh, advocate you know violence, but. You know, that's a, that's a point where you say, yeah. you know, either you or I have got to quit our job and homeschool if this is the only option because that stuff is uh, absurd. It is just I, I, unbelievable. On whatever, it is what unbelievable. level do you think you could you could you couldn't sign a kid up for wrestling t- team and not tell the parents? Yeah, I you agree. You couldn't do a dang thing. And I think that you have to be you you have to have be even though you don't call yourself an atheist or an agnostic necessarily. You absolutely cannot believe in God and believe in the trans uh, movement, you know. Because you don't believe in a just God. Well, I mean, you God, believe it, you believe so in, God you creates be- man with one type of a genitalia and a woman with another, and from that a child is born. That's natural law. That's part of the natural order of things. Obviously, that's a, a world that a God would create. And for you to go in there and play God and, and start messing with all that, you don't believe in God. I mean, you 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 believe your God or you believe in some. Uh, you know, idea of God that, that really has no uh, you just tangible. Think, yeah, Santa Claus God. He's just going to give you. Yeah, gifts. just yeah. yeah. Maybe give you a little bit more, a little right. bit less, depending on your year. And so we are so crazy. And here's the other thing that that really irks me for because we both have young children that are coming up in this world. Really contemplated this, you know, not as, as something that I would actually do because I'd be too embarrassed. But I thought if I wanted to go to the front of the line and I wanted to get this job or that job or I wanted to get elected in this liberal state or what have you, I would I would announce that I'm I'm trans, I'm, I'm transitioning. And I could start going into the woman's bathroom and everything else. Because there's cleaner, no there's sure. yeah, there's no criteria that that, that has to come into uh, you know that, that qualifies you to say that. You know, when are you going to have the procedure? Oh, you know, there's a, Brit- a, there's a British uh, stand-up comedian. He's a solid black guy who uh, who stepped and put the camera up in front of the gym, and he said, "Well, I identify as a female, by the way." Steps over and deadlifts the record for uh, females, and he goes, "There, I just sent the female deadlift record for the UK." Right. Well, who's to say yeah. he didn't? Wait, so what? Here, let me ask you about this this hockey player for. Uh, and my wife is an Orthodox Christian, as you know, not a not a Roman Catholic she's, Christian. She's, two, she's, two, having, she's having a banner week this week. Right. The two <laughs> the two churches that can trace their lineage all the way back to Jesus in, in uh, the beginning are the are the uh, Orthodox and the, and the Roman. And she's part of the the Orthodox, same seven sacraments, but obviously they're not united with with Rome. But the Orthodox Church, I will tell you this much, does not have. A hierarchy, or even any priests that I've met that per- push the permissiveness that we see so prevalent in the Catholic Church, I have never heard, you know, uh, of a rainbow flag being anywhere near a, an Orthodox Church. I've never heard any of the nonsense that comes out of, out of a lot of the Catholic churches. But well, the, they're smart businessmen. That's why you start flying that flag, and you're eventually out of business. Yeah. So the Roman, um, this this hockey player said that he wasn't going to wear a pride jersey and what have you, and now they're just crazy. It was pride night for the hockey. And now and what his he, jersey is sold out on NHL.com. Yeah, yeah. So Why, what I see about... Everybody became a fan of his overnight. Exactly. Huh? So this, this guy is a hero in a world of cowards. And why are we all so cowardly? And let me, here's, let me ask you this question. Yeah. There are people out there that have to bite their tongue because they still have to feed their children and everything else. 
but there's a lot of people out there that could that are in a position in life where they could step up and start speaking truth, and they just absolutely refuse to do so because they're afraid to offend their neighbor. Yeah, where's the tolerance? Where's the tolerance? Yeah, is where it a two-way street or exactly, is it just a one-way street? Exactly. So when it, where are we going to find these, these Christian these Christian warriors? that are going to start standing up and pushing back because it's well, really do, getting yeah, sickening. Well, you do it in a variety of ways. And, you know, living in Chicago, uh, you have to, uh, you're almost living underground. And, and take, uh, the church existed underground for many, many years. And uh, it does still so does today. And you still have to do the work. And you still have to find a way to getting it done, even though it's going crazy around you. Um, so... Support those that support your ideas. Correct, uh, commend them when they do. Uh, thank them for it. Correct them when they don't. And and there are people you and I both know and actually supporters of here. And, and uh, you want to pick on the uh, Philadelphia Flyers? We got a team in Chicago that loves to fly the rainbow flag too. Oh right, I and, know. No, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. And, and w w the next right. time I see the fellow, I say, "Yeah, hey, what's the story on this?" Yeah. yeah. Oh well, you know, the, yeah. the league told us to. Do right, it. right, right. I got it. Wait yeah. a minute. No, I mean, uh, essentially, yeah. the two genders. What about this, this pro-abortion? You know, running. In, we were told that in Illinois, the cycle that you just ran in, that everybody lost because the uh, the pro boards came out and voted voted in droves on, on that single issue and that issue alone. And I believe that there is a lot of truth to that. But Some what, truth to that, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what what could we have done, the people that believe in life, to push back or uh, the, the party, if there is a party that, that, that is, it believes in the sanctity of life, what could they have done to push back? Yeah, the Republican Party in Illinois, uh, I think if you attend the meeting, you might be you know, the head of it by the end of the meeting. There's nobody left. You know, it's, you yeah. know, the state is uh, really turned. So it's a disorganization. So uh, one is, is you, you know, you have to uh, obviously still stay true to the truth, present it in the best way possible, um, but don't necessarily shy away from it. I think, uh, you know, as one of the, uh, the producers here and I were talking beforehand is saying uh, when Roe v. Wade came into fruition in uh, 72. It was, uh, it was part, you could see the argument that, 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 oh, you know, this woman has gotten herself into a pickle and she's really, uh, you know, needs a solution here and you're gonna interrupt her, her progress through life. Um, it wasn't, this wasn't intended and all this sort of thing. Okay, we can, we can understand that. Nowadays, uh, that has become such a less and less of a, an issue. It is far more, number one, it's far more of a convenience than anything. It's far more of a solution on the, uh, on the people of color side of it. Most uh, African-American pregnancy and in abortion, right? right? You know, Margaret right. Sanger couldn't have done a better job right, right. Than, than what you're yeah, doing we, now. Yeah, we addressed you know? all that last week. cross-examination with Mark Kern and my guest, Anthony Kern, recent candidate for state representative of my brother. And we're going to finish this show uh, today with cross-examination. And although these are not my uh, arguments, I'm going to take the other side as I ask Anthony some questions on cross-examination uh, to be the devil's advocate. Clearly, that's what I would be if I, if I believed what I'm asking. All right. Some of these answers are so we're going to begin with this sign right here. Solo high, no dos genera. Genero. Genero. Solo high. You got to. So see there, it there in are Spanish only there. there are only two generations. You genders. They're going to two only gender. two genders. You believe that? Yes. And don't you think that's a pretty hate-filled message? Uh, hate if you hate the truth. Yes. Well, hate has no home here, and I, I'm not <laughs> I'm not happy with a sign like that being posted around my neighborhood. How many genders do you think there are? Well, I, I mean, I, I'm not a scientist. I'm not. A... <laughs> you were on the Supreme Court of the United States at that point. Yeah. So, <laughs> what about um, they used to call them hermaphrodite or intersex, and you, you refuse to acknowledge those people? Uh, no, I do not. I, I sure there are still two genders. There's a male or a female. Uh, there's a percentage, and I'm sure it's a point oh something percentage. Uh, I will let the the. Uh, those that truly involve themselves in that in that area of studies to make a decision on that. But we're talking of a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction. And that doesn't disprove the general general rule. You know, you either made a left turn or you made a right turn at, at the intersection. 
And is it, you know, and if you wanted to find, well, I was looking from this direction or I was looking from that direction, that could be a, a you know, an argument. Yeah. So you believe this. Why do I have to believe what you believe? By the way, uh, you know, I, I, everybody out there is not a Catholic or believes your silly nonsense about uh, natural law. No, but we do uh, agree and uh, we do live in the same country and we are uh, governed by a set of rules and one is the Constitution. And if we can, you can make an argument about uh, the, the words of each, every law that you have. If you say, well, I don't necessarily believe that rule about no right turn on red. Well, know, I don't so. want the Pope running my country. Neither do I. <laughs> so uh, don't we run that risk if you don't allow people that aren't Catholic or don't believe in natural law or not Christians to uh, not be able to decide upon what their God of, uh, in their own personal conscience? Okay, fine. What's two plus two then? It's four by mine if you want to uh, disagree and think it's something else. Make your case. But for the most of us, we have to come to a conclusion on, on general understanding of the words. What words do you, are we going to dicker about? It's going to be like uh, uh, Humpty Dumpty. The words mean only what I want them to mean from day to day. I'm going to change my mind day to day. Yeah. God forbid so if you use the wrong pronouns. Let me it. ask you about the, the issue of life uh, since you referenced that. Uh, you're pro-life. I think so. And you, the only exception would be the uh, life of the mother, which is not really a, an abortion. It's a different procedure, we call it. Right. So what about uh, rape and incest? I'm against those two. And uh, so... I'm know, against you, rape and incest. Uh, you, like, you like losing elections? What percentage did you get? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm short. I haven't convinced enough people yet. That's okay. all. It's on me, not them. So is it? Uh, I have do, no. I have no jobs to offer them. Should, shouldn't we? Shouldn't we be selling out so that we can win elections and just compromising on, on these these other ones? Oh, sounds like a great idea. That that, that that'll do you what in the long run? You know, you're just going to be if you sell out on that, somebody's going to leapfrog you and just sell out a little bit more, and then at some point, you know, you're going to be you know running around in a. Uh, you know, a rainbow flag dress and calling yourself a mother. It's not, that's not the case. And on that, or, or on any issue, you're just gonna, you're gonna cave on everything? Well, what are you gonna, what are you gonna hold true to? If you're not gonna hold to the truth and the most important truth of that, you know, I can cave on- Well, on then you're not gonna be able to do anything about my, about my high property taxes and about uh, well, the business your... climate if you're just gonna, worry about abortions yeah exactly you you think that uh would first of all you talked who we referenced earlier uh you know the abortion's not the solution and and the proof is in the pudding it's illinois people are leaving in droves their uh, schools are emptying out the public schools in chicago have lose lose a hundred thousand nonetheless students. your chicago residents vote on the is issue of abortions of they don't course. They, they voted themselves uh uh you know another uh kick the can down the road keep their uh their their job, their uh, public pension that's completely unfunded. Eventually, you know, the the, the chickens are going to come home to roost and they're going to find, uh, you know, that pension check bouncing. And really, it's actually bouncing now because the, it, the solution is just uh, letting inflation fly up the, 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 you know, up the charts. Well, Anthony Kern, thank you so much for being our guest. Thank you so much for running for office. Thank you so much for standing for truth. In closing argument, I would say that... Uh, the arguments that I try to make, the counter arguments, really have no, not much weight. So I'm going to make a closing argument on Anthony's behalf. You and, are O for twenty, including yeah. the dinner table <laughs> arguments we used to have. Yes, uh, you indeed. Haven't won one yet. Indeed. You're so yeah, worse there, there is, than the Chicago Bears. Right. There is no end, and you know people need to start speaking truth. And even though Anthony only got about what eleven percent of the vote. Fifteen. Fifteen percent of the vote. Everybody in my house. Yeah, fifteen percent <laughs> of the vote, and uh, he, you know his running was was a good thing. And ultimately, you know, we need to stand for truth. And, and our primary allegiance as Catholics is not um, to anything other than God. And as Mother Teresa said, we're called to be faithful and not successful. I think that if we start educating people on the issues of, of natural law and, you know, this trans nonsense, speaking truth as to that and speaking truth as to the issue of, of the sanctity of life and the fact that we no longer have a birth rate in America that's sustainable, um, that we're going to die as a nation like Europe has and everything else, and they, they make it up with a, a large uh, Muslim uh, population that, that's immigrating into those countries. So it, it, it is what it is. 
Thank you. We, we love having you out there listening to us, and we, we love hitting these hard issues of the Catholic faith because, you know, we're not cowards here. Take care. Thank you for having me.